Hi there, and welcome to a trip report that started out so confusing that I still don't even fully know what was going on. I just got off of an Egypt air flight from Dubai, and I'm now transiting to my flight to Amman. Cairo doesn't exactly have the best reputation when it comes to its airport. That combined with the fact that this flight was in late October meant that I wasn't originally planning on making a video for this one, expecting there to be heightened security or something. It was very clear very quickly though that the only present danger of filming this experience would be to try to not get hit by the Fast and the Furious golf cart drivers who zip through the narrow hallways as if they're literally not in control of their own vehicles. Anywho, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this one, let me welcome you to the channel if you're new here. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket and as always, the price that I paid is in the description below. Egypt Air had no prior knowledge that I'd be filming on today's flight. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my unique experience. The rest, I'll let it speak for itself. Let's get started. Let's start out by exploring the hot, humid, and otherwise sticky Egypt Air Gena Lounge, which was so wonderful that it inspired me to spend my transit in the food court. As you look around, allow me to begin to explain. At this moment, it's around 10.30 p.m., I think. See, the thing is, Egypt started using daylight savings time for the first time in many years this year, and it ended today. My flight, as originally booked, was meant to take off at 12.25 a.m. My boarding pass said 12.25 a.m., but all of the various flight apps were telling me my flight time changed to 11.25 p.m. I thought, eh, either way, it's fine, I can still make the connection. Until I got to the airport and realized that all of the departure boards said that my flight was leaving at 1.25 a.m. And the time on the departure boards didn't match the time on the clocks that were all over the airport. Looking for just a bit of clarity, I asked the agent in the lounge. I asked her while I was pointing to the departure board two meters away on the wall next to a clock with a different time. I asked her which time the flight was actually departing and what time was it actually right now? At first she was giving, I just woke up from a nap vibes. But then halfway through her scripted answer, something inside broke and she just, she just started to laugh. Leveling with me that she honestly didn't know what time it was and her only advice was to leave the lounge and stay at the gate the entire time. Well, okay then. You can see here my conundrum. Is it 11.12 or is it 12.14? I got through security in around 20 minutes and sat down, casually taking a video of the gate. This gate, because things couldn't get more confusing, was boarding for Damam before it was boarding for Amman. The screen switched between the two, saying Damam boarding and Amman gate open. Next thing I knew, I was like the only person left in the gate area. I walked up to the gate and asked when Amman was boarding. He looked at me like I was crazy and said, it's almost finished, go now. So here I am on my bus at 11.41 p.m. for my flight, which the airport thinks is leaving at 1.25 a.m. So far, pretty great experience. We made our way to the aircraft, which was parked just across from the A330 that I came in on, and I got some views of our 14-year-old 737-800. For the days leading up to the flight, I was checking Expert Flyer, as I always do, and I assumed that there was some kind of glitch with Egypt Air system, since it showed me as the only business class passenger. No seats were even blocked. Well, this was a first for me, as I was in fact the only business class passenger. As I stepped on board, I was greeted by a pair of friendly flight attendants who were like a breath of fresh air given the past six hours or so, and I made my way to my seat. There are a whopping six rows in a two x two setup for a total of 24 seats. Six rows is really a rarity these days for premium cabins like this on a narrow body. Now, as we look around, I do need to give credit where credit is due. And it, th there seems to be a lot due here. So is the condition and the function of the seats pristine? No, not at all. But is this plane really clean? Like deep clean clean? Yeah, it really was. My surprise stems from the fact that Egypt Air does not exactly have a reputation for having the cleanest aircraft. 
There are a lot of areas where even on the best of airlines, I usually see dust accumulating. For example, on these vents. Something else that's really common to see are years of discoloration on the touch points around the air nozzles and lights. These were like brand new. Even the fabric and leather on the seats and armrests looked as if it had not only been recently cleaned, but also has been kept clean from the get-go. The carpeting as well. So perhaps I'm, I'm reaching a bit here, but I really do have to give them props for cabin upkeep. My previous flight on the A330 wasn't quite as clean, but it was by no means dirty in the cabin. Just a few opportunities in the bathroom. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. The crew came over with a bottle of water, and what I believe was my meal was loaded onto the plane seconds before the door was closed. I think we might have actually pushed back a bit late because of it. All along, the traveler's prayer and safety video began to play. Thought I'd just mention that to this day, I honestly don't know what time we took off. Flight Radar 24 and Flighty are my two primary apps for tracking such things. Flighty thinks that we departed at 11.25 p.m. and Flight Radar 24 said 12.37 a.m. and the airport thought we were an hour after that. I suppose we truly will never really know. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. The spool up, take off, and airport stats are coming up next. Coming out of Cairo, there was quite a bit of turbulence, and so the seatbelt sign wasn't turned off until we were about halfway across the Sinai Peninsula. Each seat had a pair of some cheap noise-canceling headphones, same as my last flight, but after the safety video, the IFE was turned off. As soon as the seatbelt sign turned off, I was quickly brought out my meal, which was quite a lot of food for a sub-one-hour flight. It honestly does look like they were trying, and looks a bit fancier than I was expecting, so I'll zhuzh up the description a bit. We had local citrus duo of prawn with crudite, served with wild couscous salad, fresh artisan bread, and a tropical fruit medley. 
finished off with a rich tart sable au chocolat. Everything tasted good except for the whole prawns, which I didn't try. They had a slight gray tinge to them, and I couldn't tell if it was the lighting or actually a gray tinge, so I just let them be. It must have been within three minutes of giving back my meal tray that we were in our final descent into Amman. Flying due north with the Dead Sea off to my left as we approached the Jordanian capital. Some beautiful night views, the airport stats, and the landing are coming up next. And that is that. So I should mention that the time confusion, I'm not holding against Egypt Air in the scoring, since I honestly have no idea whose fault that actually was. That disgusting lounge though, I will hold that against them with vigor. Arriving somewhere in the middle of the night isn't really something that I'm a fan of, but at least here in Jordan, I know what time it was. I really do hope you enjoyed this quick trip report today. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time from the Kempinski Cancun. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.